So to date, the largest risk factor for ovarian cancer is a family history of the disease or a mutation in a cancer predisposition gene, either BRCA1 or BRCA2. So for the highest of risk individuals, either those who test positive for a BRCA1 or 2 mutation, or even those who test negative in which a BRCA1 mutation has not been identified in their family, but they have a strong family history of breast and ovarian cancer, we'll also recommend prophylactic surgery for those individuals. We prevent ovarian cancer with prophylactic bilateral septic myofrectomy because as you have a problem with prophylactic mastectomy, you may leave a small amount of tissue behind. With bilateral septic we don't leave any tissue behind, but there's a risk of primary peritoneal cancer, which is a cancer that looks like ovarian cancer when we find it, acts like ovarian cancer in the way it spreads, is treated like ovarian cancer and responds like ovarian cancer, but it arises from the lining of the peritoneum. That occurs anywhere between 3 and 6 percent of the time in the highest of risk individuals or those individuals who have a BRCA1 or 2 mutation. So it's important to realize that even if you've had your ovaries removed and your tubes removed, that you still should follow up with somebody, discuss with them the utility of a physical examination every six months after having the tubes and ovaries removed. And some practitioners will also incorporate a CA125 or transvaginal screening still after the ovaries and tubes are removed in order to look for pelvic fluid or what may be the earliest signs of primary peritoneal cancer. However, that's a controversial topic currently. The cornerstone of treatment for ovarian cancer is surgery combined with chemotherapy. The standard in the United States, if a woman is medically able to tolerate removal of all visible tumor, that is the first step in the treatment of ovarian cancer. Unfortunately, most of the time, or 75% of the time, the cancer has spread beyond the pelvis and beyond the ovaries, so this may require um, removal of a portion of intestine or um, work in the upper abdomen around the uh, diaphragms, which coat the lungs and the spleen, but the goal is to remove all visible tumor, and that is the first step in the treatment of ovarian cancer. Men are accustomed to the supersensitivity of the, of the PSA for prostate cancer. How come nothing's come up in terms of value for early ovarian cancer? Actually, there's been a number of markers that have been evaluated in a retrospective type of fashion and being, have been picked up in a retrospective fashion, meaning we have banks of, of blood and serum from women who have developed ovarian cancer. And we're able to look at that and, and determine, is that serum, does it contain different proteins than a woman who does not have ovarian cancer? That is just a starting point. That work has to be validated prospectively in a group of women looking at women with benign and malignant pelvic masses. Is this marker a good discriminator? And then looking forward and utilizing it in screening trials. So I think we're at a point now through a number of a variety of methods, um, including proteomics, and really being able to pick up what those potential markers are. And now we're taking those markers and we're beginning to try to validate them.